Grace Rock Show, the core of new rock and metal. We've got Josh Bowles from Cope on the lovely Skype. We finally sorted it out. How are you doing, mate? You well? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm okay, yeah. I wanted to start off by asking how you're coping, but I thought you'd probably kill me for that one, so... <laughs> Do you know what? No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> Five years of doing this, yeah. Um, do you know what? I'm coping all right, yeah. Yeah? Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Have you been uh, developing any new skills or anything over the, the lockdown period at all? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still working, uh, working for ah. um, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, I did actually have uh, a week off last week um, and I'm actually quite glad to be working now because... There's fuck all to do, man. <laughs> Fair play to you, mate. Fair play to you. Um, so I want to kind of go straight into things. So recently you released uh, the video and the single Gold, uh, which I absolutely love. I wanted to ask, um, were you part of that uh, video on the set? How knackered was he from running all that way? <laughs> well, uh, I wasn't there. Um, I uh, The rest of the guys know me as a bit of a grump and I don't enjoy <laughs> music videos <laughs> Fair play. if i can avoid uh doing them I, I will um but yeah from what i've been told that was i believe tom's fourth run of the day and he was getting pretty knackered by by the end of it and to his credit fair play to him he, he actually spent like a week going on jogs before so <laughs> fit enough to do it because obviously the, the video it's quite a simple concept so <laughs> but the the idea that you've got to be able to do the whole run right uh yeah. so and it's only three and a half minutes which doesn't sound long but when you're trying to like <laughs> emulate screaming as well that can get quite uh quite challenging um but yeah absolutely it was funny just to make him run to be honest <laughs> <laughs> so i've noticed um in like the, the the press releases and stuff you're kind of like the main guy who's part of it so do you write a lot of the songs you kind of like more of a founder member or uh yeah I'm, what's your role? I'm the only well we're actually a six piece which a lot of people don't realize uh but one of our, our other guitarists a guy called ed doesn't uh play live with us so he's okay. um in the studio he's uh writing behind the scenes but ed and i are the only original members left but um okay. it was a project started by me in 2015 and yeah, I write most of the lyrics, if not all. There's uh, there's a track on there on the on the record that's actually written by Solomon, our drummer, um, oh. which is stellar, you know. And when he, you know, it, it took a little bit of tuning. Um, what uh -huh. he, what the other, if the others write lyrics, what they tend to do is they'll write a load and then they'll send it to me. I will edit them and make them a bit more succinct. I don't I, I don't want to. <laughs> because that it's not like it's bad but sometimes the, my structure is different to theirs and i'll yeah. try to fit it into my little my little thing but um but yeah I, I i i don't get too much involved in the riff side of things although okay. i do you know I, I do write a few i tend to write riffs and then give them to ed or jay and then they'll go and build a song around it and that's kind of how i've always worked but um but the lyrics is is usually my bag yeah okay um so you used a quote uh, for one of your songs from Josh Perkins, uh, taken from the economic hitman. Um, how would you say that quote particularly relates to the current state of the world now? Uh, well, John John Perkins. Um, Sorry, yeah, I must have yeah. missed <laughs> um, Do you know what? It, it couldn't be more uh, relevant. Mm. You know, I, I believe that book was written, I want to say 2009. Um okay. Could be wrong, but I know there's been, there's been a, b a few updates over the years. But um, you know that was written kind of, I guess, in the aftermath of the 2008 crisis. You know, the the last recession we had, right, and okay. I think really that, that I don't want to say things have gotten worse over the years, but they certainly haven't gotten better. And I think the the, the book itself is is a fascinating read and gives a real insight into geopolitics and the nature of our governments you know mm -hmm. and, and what they are willing to do which is almost anything you know and yeah. uh, and especially now with the rise of like social media and the influencer and all of this i think the the, the you know the, the idea that we must cover material trappings at all costs is becoming more and more of a thing you know with so much of a consumerist society nowadays that yeah. it's depressing <laughs> <laughs> you know so um obviously kind of 
going off that, it appears as well that the message of the album you're giving, for me personally, from what I've read and heard from the songs, is kind of like to stand up for the, your particular rights and not to feel sorry for yourself. Would you say that's a correct kind of idea or is there a bit more to it? Yeah, I think that's fair. You know, um, it, it's very much a rec- It's a warning. I think, you know, the, the, the album as a whole, you know, the general theme is, is climate change and, you know, the, the destruction of the planet and the warming of the planet. Um, yeah. But there's also, you know, tracks on there. Uh, it's a lot of it's social commentary. And that's kind of what we've always done. Um, it, it's just commenting on what we see around us. You know, I, I always take the, hop, the old hip hop adage, you know, when you're writing lyrics is write about what you know about, you know, don't yeah. try and pretend, don't try and be something you're not just write about your life. And, you know, when you're like um, a middle class white kid, sometimes <laughs> people, <laughs> you don't know, you know, whether there's much to write about. But there's so much going uh, there's so much going on in the world. And if you care about any particular thing to the mm. point where you're getting angry, you know, it, it's like if, if there's issues in society, for, for example, Grenfell, you know, mm. fuck. Right. Yeah. Is. and there's still people who are without housing there's there's bodies still in the fucking building that shit drives me mad and that's what kind of spurs me on you know to to to, to write about that sort of stuff but um yeah I can't, I can't remember what the question was now i do this no it's okay don't worry <laughs> uh, you probably you've pretty much answered things it's are you standing up is, is the message from the album to stand up for your rights and it's not feel sorry for yourself it's to do something right do something about it you know and and and, i mean it's kind of rich me saying that what am i doing i'm writing a fucking song about it but (laughs) i think you know if 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 you don't feel like you can do something you know like um for example you've got a job you know you can't spend your days picketing or you know whatever but i think if you care about something enough then you should absolutely speak out and stand up for yourself and others Um, you were talking about obviously climate change and stuff uh, that being like a main feature of the album um outside of music is there anything you and the guys are particularly doing that you're um, you know to help uh change things or push that message good question um probably not enough for sure there's definitely not enough that we you know there's more that we could be doing um i think a lot of us have changed kind of our lifestyle habits you know for example um our, i think Three out of five of us are either vegan or vegetarian. Yep. Um, we try and it's, it's simple things, you know. We try and recycle. Try and you, you take fucking uh, bags bags for life when you go shopping. You know, it's yeah. little things like this, and it's it's. I think the best thing you can do is be aware of these issues. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're aware of it and it's in the back of your head, then your behaviour will change. You know, like if you give a shit, if you don't give a shit, then you're going to continue chucking rubbish on the side of the road you know I, it's it's yeah. not, i think if if it means something to you 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 will adjust your behavior um but but you know we've, we've been on pickets you know we 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 went on the brexit march oh fucking four years ago now yeah. um we none of us wanted to leave the european union it is what it is it's happened move on get over it hope yeah. things will get better you know um but I think there's more that we can do for sure. We're guilt. We're all guilty of that. Okay. Um, so you've got the uh, your debut album's coming out on the 22nd of May. It's called The Shock Doctor- Doctrine, and it says the album was recorded in various locations. Mm-hmm. Uh, how difficult was the recording process made because of that for you? Um, it just made it a little bit staggered. You know, it wasn't mm. it wasn't a point where we entered the studio and then we left. You know, and okay. then. We- it was uh, we, we we first did the we started with the drums obviously we did that in uh, Musicland Studios uh, in East London we've been there a couple of times I can't remember the name of the guy who runs it but he's fucking lovely he's a really great <laughs> dude um, but for, I, you know for the life I can't remember the name but um, yeah we did it there they got some really great facilities it, it looks like a building site well, it did at the time because oh wow refurbishing but I love that that's that's awesome you know I'd I, I'd much rather go into a half built room and you record the, and you still get a fucking awesome sound whether or not it, it's polished or, or not you know so so that was fun um and then you know we went up and did guitars we did some guitars in Keefley, which is okay. up near leeds um oh wow so all over the country yeah it was a mission it's because our, our producer leak uh leak gates um is from the human project who are a fucking amazing band if you haven't heard them before um okay. and, um 
he has been with us pretty much since day one. We've only ever used one other producer on one record. Um, that was our previous EP. We mm -hmm. went back to Luke because um, we really get on with him. He's, he's great at what he does. Uh, but he's based up in Keighley. So um, we went to him. We did... Uh, some we did the majority of the guitars there and then we finished up the guitars and did all the vocals in jay's house uh who's our guitarist we did it in his bedroom um <laughs> proper diy for about i think we locked ourselves in for a week um and love that <laughs> and yeah yeah it was it was fun man um you know it, it whilst i would have loved to have done it in uh like a, a couple of weeks in the studio and it, it kind of is what it is um it, it is a little bit tricky because you kind of lose it a bit of momentum um, yeah, but it's it's one of those things. It, it's mainly because of um, co you know costs. We, we reduce the cost doing it that way. Yeah, uh, if anyone who's ever recorded an album will know that it costs an arm and a leg. You know, and when, especially when you're um, you've got no label, it's mm. it's tricky. Um, so yeah, we had to stagger it, um, but we got there in the end. It took about a year, I think, in in total to. Uh, by the time we, we finished, like, you know, we start from the time we started recording to having uh, a mastered project back, it was about a year, which okay. by all counts is pretty quick for an album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I, my brother makes the electronic music, so kind of watching his process from his bedroom, it's not the same thing entirely, but I totally get, like, I yeah. imagine you guys are maybe a bit fed up with some songs by now. <laughs> it's uh it's interesting because some of the guys will listen to the record relentlessly you know okay. i think tom is one of them he'll just keep it on repeat and it, he ends up picking holes in stuff because he's you know he's <laughs> listened to it so much he's like oh i could do that there, i could do that there but I, what i tend to do is i'll listen to i'll listen to the the mixes before it's mastered um and i'll give my notes you know what i yeah, like yeah. changing and then i'll listen until every until I, I, i'm happy with the mixes then we'll get the masters back, same process. Once I'm happy with the master, then I don't tend to listen to the record until it's out. I mean, ah. I, I I listened to it once uh, a couple of weeks ago, just cuz, and that, yeah. I, I've, I've done it in the past where you listen to them constantly, constantly, and it doesn't actually do me any good. I just think that shit could have done that better. Or <laughs> that, uh, do you know what I mean? So I'm just like, I try and um, just step away from it and, <laughs> let other people have their opinion and, and hope for the best really <laughs> okay uh, you gave us a, a little well you teased us um at the start of april with a little april fool um i can appreciate um but have you had any like really memorable april fools that have happened to you or that you've done in the past at all um do you know what no i'm for that's really boring of an answer but yeah. <laughs> No, I haven't. Um, I mean, you could consider this an April. I was meant to get married last Monday. Um, oh, but man. Owner fucked it. So, <laughs> oh, it's no wedding. <laughs> uh, like, damn. Yeah. Um, I want to ask, obviously, something that coronavirus has really affected recently is um, obviously the um, ability for venues and stuff to stay open. Yeah, right. um, obviously, I've seen recently that. There's some. Uh, there's been a setup, obviously, for the Save Our Venues. Yeah. Uh, are you guys being a part of that? Is there anything else that we can do to help you guys or venues in particular at the moment? Do you think um, all the ideas I've seen have been great? You know, one thing that I saw which was really cool was virtual pints. You know, if someone's for someone's birthday, they said rather than buy me something, buy a virtual pint from this venue or that venue. Yeah. I think that's rad. You know, that's really cool. Um, it's pretty cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah, it's a very cool idea. And, you know, I, I think right now um, venues are, and the touring business are really suffering. You know, um, <laughs> I, I actually my day job is in the industry. I'm not going to name my label because I don't want to get in trouble. But, <laughs> we know, touring is a huge part of our business and it's taken a massive hit. So I see it from, you know, the big industry side. And then I also see it from our side. You know, we're, we're playing, we, we had tours, we well, had a tour on the cards and we had a few shows coming up and obviously yeah. everything cancelled now. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just trying to get people to engage, not so much with, with our stuff, but actually with the venues. You know, I'd yeah. rather people try and save the venue. I'd rather they give, I would rather give my album out for free and then they donate to these venues to keep them going. Yeah. Because I'm not going to make money off of this anyway, you know, and everything's just a little bonus and it will help us maybe buy some merch, but these venues, they won't come back, you know, if we don't help them out. So it, it's, it's more important, I think at the moment to show love and to, 
donate if you can donate to these venues rather than than the, the the bands themselves you know yeah i mean i'm based in liverpool myself so obviously i've seen venues go absolutely like really really bad like um so i mean obviously i i, I get myself to, to to gigs as often as i can um, yeah. and try and support like local bands big bands whatever but i mean supporting the venues in particular is very very important do you think we're at like a, a really critical point at the moment or do you think this is potentially with it being kind of so out there now for people to see um with it happening the way it is do you think this is a time that we can actually turn things around for vent small venues i mean i'm always a bit of a cynic right? and I'm, I, I like to say i'm a realist um but honestly i don't think our government will help I think we are on our own right now. Yeah. There's, I'd say there's bigger issues, you know, there are, there are bigger issues, but in our world, this is a major, major issue. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, if these venues go, go under, um, they ain't coming back. You know, I'm from Plymouth originally, and yeah. we'll, we'll have a similar grassroots scene to other, you know, small, small cities. And yeah. you know for a fact that if, if these venues don't get any sort of revenue, you know throughout like one two months that will put them under you know and then yeah. some got a huge portion of the country without a local scene or a local venue so it's 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 scary but and i i gen i unfortunately believe that we are on our own and that the government won't help venues i hope i, I hope i'm wrong i really do mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> they ain't got a great fucking track record have they <laughs> <laughs> no i know exactly what you mean um so let's try and finish things up on a positive shall we uh let's think can you name me two or three positive things that you've managed to spot even though we're in the lockdown recently the birds so uh, it's, it's random spot i've I, I i uh i live down in surrey and i've mm -hmm. got um i'm very fortunate to have a rooftop so i live in a very small two-bed flat but the fact i've got a rooftop means i can go outside get some fresh air it's, it's great and i'll go out in the morning and have a cigarette and i can hear the birds singing like loud <laughs> i was singing the other day i was like fuck me they always been this fucking loud <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i i guess they haven't um but it, yeah there's that i've 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 noticed when we <laughs> when we're driving to go and get groceries it's lovely, <laughs> you know, there's a <laughs> fucking road, it's a nice pleasant drive, um, and do you know what else, the, the main thing I've noticed is the ingenuity of people, the sheer create creativity that's coming out, you know, people are, are thinking of ways and means to engage, and there's some really fucking cool ideas, you know, that, there's, it's like that guy Mark, uh, is it Tribillet, oh, I don't know how you pronounce oh, his name, not sure. He does all that, that that electronic music on the fly. Oh, that guy! Yeah, you know what you mean in the dressing gown and the crazy glasses and everything. Exactly, it's shit like that. <laughs> it's really cool, and like these Zoom pub quizzes, like you're, you know, the, yeah. The, 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 I'm doing a quiz on Friday. I think it's it's brought out. It's really um, it's really given everyone a kind of a, a bit of a fighting spirit. You know, I think everyone's yeah. like defiant we're very british in that you know <laughs> when people are like no nah, no nah, you're on lockdown you can't this is going to shut things down we're like fuck you we'll show you <laughs> and we come up with ways to to keep engaged and to keep and to get other people involved you know um yeah. so I, yeah I, I think that's really good it, it's awesome and I, I really like the like i said that virtual point idea and mm -hmm. the i think the music business is 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 reacting really well to, you know in the face of such uncertain times and yeah i just hope people continue to to be creative and come up with new ways to to do cool shit <laughs> brilliant um, so do you want to leave one last little message or anything you want to kind of promote to say it before you uh, we wrap this up uh i think i'd like to give a big shout out to a luke yates who's our producer and of the human project amazing band um my my boy is called Native C. If you're into your drum and bass, hit him up. Nice. He's amazing. Um, and Ed, our our non live guitarist, will yeah. have a project. I'm not sure when. Uh, a post rock project. It's a double album. I've heard it. It's fucking amazing. So big up nice. Ed. I I will post that on our channels as soon as it's out. But other than that, pick up the Shock Doctrine. 22nd of May, 2020. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Thank you very much, Josh. Thanks, man. I appreciate your time.